do you organize your data? Well, so I'm a librarian and I was carefully trained to think about things in hierarchies, right? From kind of parent to child to, to kind of groupings that were logical in the sense of bringing as much together while still differentiating between these kinds of, of individual entities in that group. Um, so I'm a big fan of thinking of that kind of like big picture and then how each kind of individual piece of that picture kind of fits together, kind of like a pointillist painting, right? When you're like up close, it all looks like chaos, but then you step back and you, and you see like this lovely like sunset or or view of like a garden. Um, so I, I, I start kind of large to small and then work backwards to see if the file names I have sort correctly, right? And then if the files that I put these, these items into, you know, if I can walk away for six months and come back and still kind of find what I'm looking for um, without, you know, having to like do like a command F or like a bash kind of search uh, is possible. And then I assume that anyone can follow that logical structure. So I, so I write it down, usually on a sticky note that I like stick somewhere, uh, like a whiteboard in my office, um, or <laughs> turn into a conference proposal so that it's recorded for in perpetuity. Uh, but that, that is usually how I organize my data, in files, and then sub-series, sub-series, and then individual items. And some say that makes me compulsive. I say it makes me effective. Uh, well, I don't think it's as interesting how I organize my data as it is how I organize other people's data. Uh, so oh, how that's do I... bold. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I find uh, I'm no longer in the game of doing primary research, so uh, organizing my own data is not so interesting. Uh, but uh, the question of organizing data uh, in a project or for a researcher or a consortia or an institutional level is very interesting. Uh, and uh, when it comes to research, I think that uh, there's a tradition of scholarship that makes people very aware of the fact that, uh, for example, uh, when you're doing uh, research for a paper, uh, then you should organize your bibliography, for example. So uh, if you want to do proper, well-founded research, first thing you do is you go out and you do bibliographic research and you organize your bibliographies and you get ready to do your citations on which your paper is founded. What I find interesting is that uh, in digital humanities we still don't have like broadly accepted methodologies uh, for uh, organizing uh, digital research in a, in a systematic fashion the way that we organize bibliography. So. Uh, the thing I try to encourage in terms of organizing data is to uh, treat uh, sources, um, digital resources, uh, in the same way as you would treat bibliographic resources. So you have to document all the things that you're interested in analyzing that are digital resources with the same amount of respect as you would uh, use towards uh, a bibliographic resource. Uh, and that's, so, I'm going cool. to interrupt you there. Um, so I think one of you are right about the digital humanities kind mm. of having that, that conundrum of, you know, this is, you know, the idea of data, right, in the social sciences is, is, is traditionally very different from the data in the digital humanities, and there's a lot of overlap, right, in terms of saying, you know, technology allows us to look at wider and wider phenomenon, you know, it's not just one book that I'm looking at or one author I'm looking at, it's multiple authors, multiple books, right? Or in my case, because I come from a background of museology and art history, you know, it's like an artist and their painting or an artist and their sculpture and then kind of whole movements that we're looking at there. So I like the idea that you're saying, like, how do we actually respect and document that process? But I think that I, I would say, like, why are you thinking about that from a bibliography, kind of like textual approach, as opposed to, you know, the humanities, really thriving because it's always been not only interdisciplinary, but multimedia, right? So why not images? Why not sound? Why not, you know, these kinds of documentary practices you have in like ethnomusicology or ethnography, right, for social practices and then even art history, um, so. Yeah, no, I think uh, I, I actually agree with you. I think that the, it's not so much the 
the, the correct reference is a uh, citation more than bibliography. So, uh, I mean, bibliography supports citation, and what we need is the ability to cite resources regardless of uh, their materiality. Uh, okay. So, yeah. you could think about, if we're talking about digital humanities, I mean, a book as much as an image, as much as uh, an access database, uh, is simply a resource. Uh, is which that be why objects aren't material in CDOC CRM? <laughs> no, like I'm like yeah. literally like harkening back to that because it's, it's a very perplexing yes. notion. Okay. That is a good reason. I like this. <laughs> Was it the actual reason or did that just get like thrown at you? No, no, no. It's okay, actual. it's an actual reason. I'm not a genius. Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh... So yeah, I think that basically you need to, we need to establish new standards and practices in digital humanities to be able to cite uh, all sorts of resources, especially digital resources, uh, uh, so that we're at the point where you can get into very large, complex data sets, process, it, process them some way, and then come to some sort of conclusions. And because we don't have uh, well-known and respected methodologies for doing that processing, indicating how that data was processed and how it's linked to a data set that you can come back to again, whether it be an image data set, a textual data set, uh, a 3D data set, you need to be able to go back to primary sources, whether they're texts or other uh, multimedia objects, uh, and ask those questions again in order to do science. Uh, so in terms of organizing data, I think the fundamentals in digital humanities uh, is to create these lists of resources uh, that are the baseline for your research that extend beyond traditional bibliography. Yeah. I agree. Excellent.